Hey y'all, I'm Luke, and this is my algorithm and data structure series where I help you, the prospective JavaScript student, tackle the most common algorithms and data structures to prepare you for that interview so you can ace it. Because remember, luck is where practice meets opportunity. So let's go ahead and get started. This one is going to be a nice and simple one that'll actually have several solutions broken across probably several videos. This is uh, the first one that I tell all my students to get started with, and it's always a fun one to discuss and see the crazy solutions that y'all come up with. So if you want to, try and do this, pause the video now, and see how your solution winds up against mine. But we're going to tackle this week's solution with a for loop, a very traditional way to do things, even though, again, there are a couple different ways we could tackle this particular algorithm. We are tasked with writing an algorithm or a function in this case is what I probably should say in the description. Write a function called string reverse. It takes an argument as a string. We'll call it str, S-T-R, and its goal is to return the reversed version of it. So if we have reverse, we get as reverse. If we have hungry box, we get obergne. And if we have hullabaloo, I had to look up a funny word, we get ulabala as our output, right? So when it comes to these interviews, especially if you're at a whiteboard style interview, right, and the keyword return is very important because that's the purpose of these functions, to return an expected value that we can test against, especially if you're writing tests via Mocha or something like that in the real world. In my case, I'll be just logging things to the terminal above my fat head here, and we'll go from there. We're still going to add that return keyword in there. I doubt you're going to be writing the terms console.log in a notepad. If you're doing like a Zoom style uh, whiteboard interview or if you're an actual in-person whiteboard interview, then more than likely you're not going to be writing console.log str and be like, can I see what this would look like in a terminal? Probably not, but we have to visualize it somehow. So let us begin. We got to take and make a variable that's going to represent our reversed string. So we'll call it reverse and it's simply going to start with a... Uh, empty string that we're going to be adding our characters into. So we're going to be looping through our string and I am a, and we'll get errors as I auto save. I should probably turn auto save off now that I think about it because that way we don't constantly see all these syntax errors here. So hold on. Yeah, well, it's going to, it's going to just log. Well, now it's next to me. Maybe I should have it like do a new line and log everything instead of having to log it simply below me, but we'll, whatever, we'll get there. So I'm going to go ahead and write return reverse at the bottom here, and we're going to console log what it is as I go along the way, because I need to make sure that it successfully, let's go ahead and clear out this output since it has that error there. There we go. With autosave, I won't have to worry about those errors happening. Okay, or without autosave. So we have our reverse string. I'm going to log it so we can actually see what's happening here. And I'm also returning it to make sure this function can be tested appropriately, whether you're doing something like leak code or something like that. We want to make sure it's working the way it is. So we need to loop through that string, which we can set up with the traditional for loop. But again, I'm a proponent that if you know some shorthands, I have my fat fingering so many of the wrong keys. There we go. Now, the traditional for loop is fine, but in the context of a whiteboard interview, you might be in a weird office with drop ceilings and sterile incandescent lights and a couple individuals dressed up in suits or nice clothes or as developers, typically like a blazer and a t-shirt. Maybe they're just hanging around, right? Like, and they're watching you and there's pressure and I'm in VS Code. I have nice autocompletes and syntax highlighting and bracket pair colorizers and extensions that visually make this code easy to see if I've made a typo or something like that. In the real world, if you're at a whiteboard holding an Expo marker, the chances of you writing commas instead of semicolons or making a mistake with this syntax here or writing I plus and forgetting something could ding you in the real world if you're not careful. Those could be things you run into where you're nervous and this is you don't have all these features. So... If there are shorthands that you know, for example, using a for of loop, we can call it const char of str, that is a lot better to write in a whiteboard setting than the other traditional for loop, as there's way less room for error. And I'm a huge proponent of that because I'm a nervous Nelly myself. I suffer from incredible anxiety in those kind of settings, even though I will, I'm will, i one of those nervous talkers. So even though I don't seem nervous, I begin chatting a lot and leaving... Uh, and leaving a lot of white noise of, of me talking, which is what I'm probably doing here. Uh, I make mistakes like that, and I made mistakes like that in interviews in the past. So uh, I'm a huge proponent of using shorthands where you know them. So we're going to actually be using a for of loop, right? And now that we have the char, I mean, just check it out from here. 
If I log what the char is as I go through this loop, we see that the output ends up being nothing because I'm not running this function. So we're gonna have to call string reverse. And let's pass in our first keyword, which is the reverse string right here. There we go. Now I'm actually calling the function. Ha, 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 I knew that. Who said I didn't, right? Save the file and there we go. So as you can see, it logged every character of the string. So if you learned about a for of loop today, you're welcome. They're quite nifty to know how to do. It's the same thing as tr traditional for loop and also write in like, I don't I have auto save on, like writing something like const char equals stri from your traditional for loop. It takes that step right here and just combines it into one go. So rather than just log the, the characters, all I need to do is add them to my reverse string in the order I'm logging them in and simply add each letter beforehand. So I'll basically be taking this E, adding it before the R, taking this V, adding it before the E, and just doing that in reverse, which is actually quite easy to do. I'm gonna take the reversed variable and I'm going to assign to it, it's the char plus the rest of the reverse string like that, right? So basically I'm taking the character that I see and adding it to the beginning of that string. That's I'm concatenating it at the beginning rather than at the end. So there you go. And that's all there really is to it to get this algorithm going without too much trouble knowing some shorthand. I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and test our other ones to make sure they look correct. But you know, I don't think we have to worry about that. Hungry box. Get in the comments if you know that reference. Uh, logs correctly as a reverse string. Hullabaloo should also log correctly as a reversed string. And there you go. Uh, that is how you solve the string reverse function with a for loop using some cool shorthand with the for of syntax and just doing some reverse string concatenation to achieve the desired result. This series is meant to be fairly short and to the point and explain my thought process. There'll be times I might bring in some diagrams. This one's actually fairly easy to figure out though. So I've done a series like this before, I think called Whiteboard Wednesdays as a playlist on covalence. This is kind of like the rebirth of that series where I intend to just keep on adding and be this consistent format, not having to hop between a browser and things like that. Um, so hopefully, uh, I'll see y'all in the next video where we talk about string reverse using a different solution because having multiple solutions to the one problem can actually make for some great conversation in an interview setting. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check the description links below to see if you, to get involved in our covalence community, either through the full stack development course or our advanced react course.